Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to mark charts. We'll pull up Tesla, ticker TSLA, and show you how to find simple areas of value when trading. If you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you a few different ways on how you can mark uh, large cap names like Tesla, Spy, Apple, Nvidia, things like that. So we're gonna do this example today on Tesla uh, and we have right now the monthly chart up, but we'll go over our time frames and how to mark. Uh, and just a, a quick rundown on how you can mark this chart. And there's multiple ways you can do this. And I'll show you that. Uh, and there's gonna be benefits to each way uh, of marking these charts. So maybe you can combine multiple uh, ways of marking this chart to find support and resistance or trend lines and things like that and to find yourself uh, some trade ideas inside of that. So let's go over it now. So monthly chart on Tesla. So if you go in here, just type in TSLA and you're good to go. And uh, up top, we wanna choose the M for one month. And if you don't have that, just click this down box and you'll, uh, you'll find it. So we're looking at a monthly chart, which uh, for those who are not fully aware, this means that each one of these candles represents a whole month of price action that went up, down, up, down, left, right, whatever you want to call it. So each candle, these are candles, red candle, green candle, green candle, green candle, red candle. These are uh, a month worth of data all compiled into that, uh, that, that candle. What we can see is the volume here at the top. We can see that these numbers are changing and you can see that there's the volume here. You can see the volume for each one of these candles. If you just hover over, you'll see uh, like this one has 2.65 billion uh, shares traded that day. So that's the volume for each one of these monthly candles. So you're gonna see a lot of volume because it's Tesla, it's pretty liquid, right? It's got a lot of shares being traded every single day. Uh, looking at this chart, you can simply mark trend lines. You can go over here and trading view. Uh, I have the magnet turned off. We'll go over the magnet and how it's uh, helpful in just a second. But uh, for trend lines, go up here. And if you don't have this, just trend line, alt T as well. But we'll just select it like that. And you can choose where you want to start your trend line and you can draw it out. So this is beneficial because you can now label this, right? You can come in here and you can, you can label this and say uh, month, right? So that is a monthly trend line. So we know that we can now uh, develop some analysis here saying that this is a, a monthly trend line. Now you can uh, get it closer to the uh, body of the candle, which is uh, the, the basically the, the thickness of that candle, right? These, this is the body and uh, the thing at the top is little wicks are, are exactly that, they're just wicks. So candle body and wick. So we can get this closer to the body, right? We could pull this down and say, okay, we wanna get a little bit closer. Uh, or you can keep it to the tops of those wicks at the highs, right? So however you want to do that, that's an easy way just to go ahead and draw yourself a trend line. Now, trend lines can be pretty useful, especially on large cap names like Tesla, Apple, NVIDIA. Uh, when it comes to low float names, I don't think that they hold as much weight. Uh, but of course, you could still use them in your analysis. And if you find any value with them and you're consistent, then of course, stick to what's keeping you consistent. TSLA, one month chart. This is a monthly trend line. Now, what's cool about this, guys, if you switch to a smaller time frame, say you like to trade the 15 minute time frame, we reset our chart. Again, because we're on a 15 minute time frame, all of these candles represent 15 minutes worth of volume, price action, and what's going on there, right? So these are 15 minute candles. Each one of these are 15 minutes. If I scroll down on the price axis over here, you'll see eventually, there it is. That's the uh, trend line. So we have that trend line that we marked on the monthly chart now up here uh, on our 15 minute chart. So no matter what, you will always see that. Now it's gonna be harder to see it. It is pretty far away from where the price is because this is where the price is. This is where that trend line was. And that's why on that uh, smaller time frame it looks pretty far away. So easy way just to mark uh, a trend line. So let's get rid of that. So trend lines can be useful. Now, uh, you can mark this chart a number of different ways. Let's turn on the magnet here and uh, I have it set to strong magnet. So what the magnet does is when you hover over any one of these candles and you hit Alt H or Alt J, then you will plot a line at the top of that candle. If you don't have it on, you'll see if I hit Alt H up here, it will then plot it wherever I, I'm hitting Alt H. So Alt H, Alt H, right? So 
I'll get rid of all these. Uh, Alt J is the opposite line. Mine may look different than yours. Uh, you can just go into the settings and you can change exactly how it looks. So if you want to change the settings, then it will then plot uh, like that. And you can actually save it too, guys. So you can come in here and say, so I've got some for four hour level and hey, there's a daily level just like that. So delete that, right? We've got that out of the way. We're gonna go with Alt H for now. Uh, Alt J if you want a different type of line or if you wanna differentiate your lines, which we'll go over why. Uh, Alt H over each one of these candles with the magnet on. So let's turn that on. See the difference here? Alt H, it now marks the top of that candle, right? Alt H, Alt H, Alt H. So we can find areas here that look like possible resistance areas, right? So we can go through like this, we can say, okay, as we go up, these are the tops of those candles, right? So they're gonna hold some weight as a possible resistance. Now it looks like a mess, right? It looks like a whole bunch of, of lines and levels over here. But now if we switch down to, again, a 30 minute chart, right? Or I say a one hour chart, we're trading on Tesla. And we scroll this down, well, there you go. You now have zones and areas of value. So this could possibly be areas to take profit as you see these are the tops of those candles and may provide some pressure and resistance because if we go back to the monthly chart and we look at these candles, I'll turn off the lines for now. If you hit that I uh, right there, we'll turn off the lines so you can see your chart. Uh, you can see that a lot of these have those wicks, right? They go up to the top and they pull back down. The reason I mark those is because that means it's a price rejection at the top of this candle. That means it got up to that level and just couldn't hold. It just rejected, right? So we look at that level as a possible area of interest. So if I'm in the position and it's scaling up or it's moving up to that level, then I tend to like to take profit as uh, it's a higher probability that we will see pressure at that level. Let me fix that line. So if we scroll up and down on the price axis, it'll make it a little easier to see. Again, this is using a monthly chart here. Now, something that's really cool is you can go through this and use a monthly chart, mark your lines, your levels will be plotted on the side for you. Alt H is a line that goes all the way across. Alt J is not. Alt J will just go from the candle to the right. So if we go to say now a weekly chart and we reset the chart, we zoom in, same idea. Go over these candles. We have the magnet turned on, right? We have it set to strong magnet. So, and we just hover over any one of these that we want to mark. So it's really fast and it's awesome. So Alt J and there we go. Now, the reason I'm using Alt J is because I wanna know when I'm trading this stock that that's a different time frame, right? It holds less weight. So the, the greater the time frame, right? The month is greater than the week. The week is greater than the day. So the greater or wider the time frame, typ uh, typically it's gonna hold more weight as a resistance and then possibly as a support, right? So as we uh, mark these levels, we can hit Alt J. So Alt J, Alt J. Okay, this looks like a resistance in here. So it looks like a lot when you're looking at these type of charts. But if you're trading like intraday, you're trying to day trade or you're trying to swing trade something like this. Well, what you can do is you can then build your strategy around which one of these gaps is going to be more favorable for you. So which one of these gaps is going to be uh, where you want to enter and then maybe where you want to predetermined uh, where to take profit, right? So switch on down to a 30 minute chart again, smaller time frame. hit reset, right click, reset chart view, and we can now scroll this down. And now we have levels that are these purple levels. And you can, again, guys, you can change this. You don't have to have it that color. You can change it any color you want. Whatever color you select and pick, uh, that's what it's going to stay as until you change it. And you can always save your, your selection and choose it. So if it plots the wrong line, well, just choose the right one and there you go. So we now have these levels plotted on Tesla. We know that 217.80 is a resistance, 223.49 is a resistance. So if I was in Tesla, I'd be looking at these possible areas to, uh, to take profit as their historical rejections, right? So if we're looking at the history of this, uh, this stock on a weekly time frame, so we switch back to the weekly up here, the W, and we switch back, we can see that they, these were areas it rejected. So it went up and rejected, went up and rejected. So if it's a red candle, I'll turn this off again, just a quick anatomy of, of candles. If it's a red candle, what that means is the price started here. It moved up to here at some point in this uh, weekly candle. Again, this is a weekly time frame, so this is a weekly uh, a candle full of weekly data, right? All of the weekly information is put in here. And if I say weekly one more time, we all have to drink, uh, but a non-alcoholic for me. 
So we can see that uh, right here, Tesla. If it drops down, it opened up here. If it drops down here, that's going to be a red candle. So if it opens and closes below that open, that's a red candle. So this is opened up here, closed down here, opened up here, closed down here, opened up here, closed down here. The wicks, right? Those those little uh, things on top and things at the bottom, these are called wicks. And that is basically saying, hey, the price went up here and rejected. So it opened here, it closed here, it went down there, went up to here. So this is a rejection of higher prices, rejection, rejection, right? So we look at that as possible resistance, and that's why we can mark those. And you can see if you use the magnet, it's it's uh, perfect. It just marks it top of that line. There's no guesswork to it. It's to the penny. It's exactly right. And how I know that is this is a 217.80 level. If I hover over this candle, you'll see up here at the top, this H for high, right? The high of the candle. H is the high. L is the low, C is the close, and over here, O is for open, right? Opened here, closed here, and hit a high here and hit a low here, right? That's all this information here. So the high of this candle, which is being marked, should be 217.80, and we should see that on this H right here. Hover over that candle, and guess what? It's 217.80. So there's no guesswork there. It's, it's spot on to the penny. And that's really critical for anyone's strategy because uh, these these pennies count, right? Every penny counts when you're, it's coming down to day trading or swing trading uh, or, or long trading. It may be a different story. So again, guys, uh, quick review here. Monthly timeframes will hold more weight than weekly. Weekly will hold more weight than daily and any wider time frame will hold more weight. So two month, three month, whatever you want to look at, it's going to hold more weight typically than a smaller time frame. If you get too far back, uh, if you start to get too far back, right, you start to see like a, a year back, two years back, three years back, it may not hold as much weight today because those levels have been tested and, and uh, those traders who have really built that resistance area or support area have had time to either sell for a loss or sell for a, a huge win, right? So, and most of them, I'm, I'm guessing, have sold for a huge win. There's, of course, those traders that will hold on forever and maybe add at that level. So maybe it will hold some weight. But trust me, the farther back you get in history, the less weight it's going to hold today as a critical level. So if you're looking for these critical levels and it looks like a mess here, that's because we're on the monthly chart. Switch on down to a one-hour chart, reset your chart, and voila, you now can see you've got these levels that you can trade. So you can now see and assess this gap is more favorable than this gap. Maybe if we enter into this gap, we have our stop loss down here. So it really helps develop a strategy around this, a, a trade idea, a real trade idea, right? With a stop loss in place, uh, a contingent plan in case it doesn't go our way because it doesn't always go your way. So we have that marked out. That's a really simple way of doing so. In this uh, quick tutorial, we use the monthly chart and we used the uh, weekly chart. I like to use for large cap, I like to go through and mark levels on the monthly, weekly, daily, and sometimes the four hour, depending if I'm trading intraday. If I'm trading for like a swing trade, right? I'm, I wanna hold this for, I wanna hold Tesla, get in this position and hold for a bigger move. Well, I'm gonna be holding for a longer time, and so I wanna reference a that, that type of time frame. Uh, for my trade. In other words, if I'm going to hold Tesla for a week or two, well, I need to reference the weekly chart because I want to see a wider time frame and see that data and information. What the heck's going on, right? So, monthly chart. Let's uh, let's turn on these levels again. Let's delete this real quick, and you can see now we have no levels. So it's really easy, guys. Go to the monthly chart, and if you want to mark these uh, these levels, you can go through just by hitting Alt H. Alt H, Alt H, Alt H, and look how fast you can do it, right? So you can go through here and just start marking these levels, and now you have these lines and resistance areas uh, marked, right? Uh, you can do that on the weekly time frame as well. Alt J, Alt J, Alt J. Look at that. You know, it, it's pretty fast, right? So, and, and again, this it doesn't have to be extremely fast. Don't don't worry so much about that because, again, if you're looking at Tesla to hold for a day or hold for a few hours or whatever then you know, getting this done as soon as possible is not the biggest uh, biggest hurdle. I think it's going to be more accurate. So make sure that you're, you're going through and being accurate with your levels. Now, that's how you can do this on, uh, let's see, a uh, uh, just looking at candles and marking lines and levels like that. So you can do that uh, for Tesla. Another way you can look at this is you can change the type of chart we're looking at. So you can go to a monthly chart, same idea. 
we had that trend line. So let's let's draw that trend line again to see something here. I just want to do a test. And if you're drawing trend lines, you're going to want to turn the magnet off. Otherwise, it's going to be all wonky and crazy. I mean, you can use it, I guess, but uh, I usually turn it off. So trend line. Okay. This is a good trend line that I want to plot on there on the chart. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. And now we have that on the chart. Let's switch the candles. So this is a candle chart. So you have the option to change it to whatever type of chart that you want to use. Let's just go to a line chart, a simple line chart. If we go to a line chart, do you guys notice that? Do you see what's happening here? We are not uh, hitting those those tops of those wicks. I believe this must be going off the close uh, or something. I'm not sure uh, what it's doing. Yes, it's going off the close right here. So this is going off the close. So this could be a different approach as well. So you know you could mark this as well, or you could just choose to move your line uh, your other line down. You could look at this now as an area of value rather than just a uh, just a strict. You know, that's the level, right? Give yourself that little that little wiggle room. That's an area of value now. So if we get into this area of value and it holds up, well, you know, that's promising for a possible reversal on Tesla. And again, this is using a monthly time frame. So uh, let's see, we can draw a few more of these. And, you know, again, guys, play around with this. You know, if you see something like this and you saw, oh, this is, this is bouncing up, this is bouncing up, and it gets a little bounce here and then fades through, well, this is a bearish movement, right? So if, in other words, this is uh, something that if I'm looking to go long and hold for this type of move up, well, this is not what I want to see. I want to see it continue to bounce off this level and hold weight and strength. But you can see that even though we were bouncing off of this uh, line and level here, we have these two points to go off of. And we thought maybe this will be the one, right? We have this area of resistance here, this area of a downtrend, right? So I really just a simple way to use trend lines using a, a line graph here. If we switch the graph uh, or the chart, excuse me, to uh, let's say, uh, and we can go to both like that. So let's go into a area chart. But you can mess around with this, guys. Mess around with this. You can see uh, maybe areas of value rather than just using a rigid line. So in other words, you don't want just one value. So if you're trading this, you don't want to just use one value. Maybe having a couple values in that area of value is going to be a little bit more uh, you know, critical to your strategy for ensuring that you're not getting stopped out too early or you're not taking uh, false breakouts, right? Because this right here could be considered a false breakout because yes, it entered the zone, but it has to hold the zone and it didn't right there. So this is uh, an exit point. And sure enough, it's been fading since. And this is a monthly chart. So we'll see what happens with Tesla. But regardless, this is just a really easy way that you can do that. Switch back to candles. And you can see that this is different for the candles, right? So maybe you could even come through this and you could label this, right? You could say, okay, this one is, you know, we'll put it on here as a uh, line uh, chart. Uh, if I could type line chart, there we go. And we'll put, uh, let's see, monthly. So you can put some information here and you can say, uh, let's see, based on close, because it's based on the close of the candle, right? And now we can use this one and we can say this was a uh, candle chart and uh, we'll say monthly chart, monthly, and just put some information so that way you know which is, uh, which, is which and going off the highs, right? And you can do that through each one of these and really develop a really strong analysis of is Tesla going up? And if so, what is my game plan? What is my strategy? What am I looking at here? Right? So you can go through this and you can say, okay, well, if I get in Tesla, it's got to get above this level and hold. Because what we look at guys most in most times is when a previous resistance, right? This resistance level, if we get above that resistance level, well, the idea is we want to hold above that resistance level. And this is pretty interesting here, guys. This is that line that closed above. So yes, we closed above. We hit that other line there, hit the high, and, and that's our zone, right? So if we can get above this zone, then man, we can maybe look at this as a bullish uh, type of movement, a bullish reversal, and possibly a bullish trend that might give you something like this over here, right? So this is one really easy way, guys. This is just easy trend lines. I'll delete these off the chart. You can uh, you can go through. This is a monthly time frame. I hope that helped. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. If you're in the Discord, uh, just send me a message. And if you're not in the Discord, we do have membership access at bullishbublive.com. So guys, I appreciate your time. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, thumbs up, drop a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.